Hello, my name is Roger Rock, and I'm gonna, today in this video I'm going to show you the five spring bolt kits that we have along with some installation tips. I'm going to start off by explaining briefly the, how the spring bolt, the mechanics of it, how it works. With all our different kits that we have, you start off by drilling a hole in the, both surfaces that you're going to join, and then screwing or attaching a spring to the base of both holes. And after you do that, you're going to insert a, a center a guide pin and twist the joint together and when you do that one spring threads inside the other once the two surfaces come in contact with each other they begin to pull on each other uh, successively tighter as with, as with each additional turn that you put on it uh, the joint and that's going to create your clamping power and uh, result in a basically a concealed internal clamp. Now whenever I'm getting ready to do uh, railings I always take a thin cut of the rail profile that I'm using for my job. I'm going to measure up three quarters of an inch from the bottom and make a mark in the center and I'm going to measure down about one inch or seven eighths of an inch down from the top and then make a mark in the center and then in from the edge and this is for doing my uh, right hand or left hand miters which I'll show you in a minute. You're going to measure in three quarter and down five eighths and make another X and then I always drill an eighth inch hole in the center of each of those marks. When it comes time to install my hardware, I simply put the wafer cut over one face of the joint with an eighth inch bit. I make a mark with the eighth inch bit, transfer that mark, come over on the other side of the joint, flipping the template with an eighth inch bit. I make a transfer the mark onto this side of the joint. And I take a 5 8 paddle bit, in this case a 5 8 paddle bit is, is what you use and uh, with the tip of your paddle bit goes in that eighth inch hole that you made and you're just going by hand you don't need a drill press in, in most cases you, you're simply going to drill a, the hole an inch and a quarter deep on both sides and after you do that you take the uh, screw place it on your drill slide the spring over the screw and then you can attach the spring to the bottom of the hole and you do that on both sides of the joint now that's your rail connector kit and that's used on uh, up easings, over easings, quarter turns, uh, volutes, any of your connections you need to make from with that connects to a rail. And that also includes 90 degree joints. Now in the case of your 90 degree joint to the right or to the left, I call this a level 90, a level right or a level left, and you're going to do this when you're going to bring a wall rail down and return it into a wall. That's where you're going to use this top and off to the side mark that you have. You're going to place that flush with the short point, transfer the mark with your eighth inch drill bit, do the same thing by flipping your uh, template and transferring the mark and drilling this uh, hole on this side. Now these holes, instead of an inch and a quarter deep, you're probably going to want to drill them about one inch deep. And your screw, or screws that come with it, I would suggest taking these uh, and placing them in a vice grip. And with your safety glasses on, taken uh, on a belt sander, grind maybe a quarter of an inch off of each tip. Uh, and taking those few little steps, that should prevent the screw from coming out the side of the rail profile. And you know, I've, every time I've done that, I really haven't had a problem, but that's something you might want to experiment with on a, on a scrap piece before you actually get into making the joint. You do the same thing. Uh, you're going to attach the spring to the bottom of the hole, insert the pin, and the alignment pin is used just for that, for aligning, and then you twist the two pieces together you can do, I recommend you do it dry to make sure that your pin isn't too long and, and holding uh, your joint apart and stopping it from separating. All right, there's your joint. You, you can just do a couple of turns to make sure everything's fine, that it comes together good, that you can move it and get it aligned. And if the pin is too long and, and restricting you from, for the, from the joint coming together, you can take the a pin out and put the pin in a vise and with a uh, hacksaw, handsaw, depending on what the, uh, the pin's made out of, you can cut a quarter of an inch off the pin without any trouble, without affecting the structural integrity of the joint, and then put it back together. 
and, uh, and, and try it. Now if you like it, everything's fine. It only takes a, about a minute or two to figure that out. You can apply glue to both sides. Now whenever I'm doing a joints, whether it's in white oak or red oak, but especially on red oak, the glue will go into the end grain. Uh, so I usually put three coats of glue on before I make my joint, my final joint. And uh, the glue, that gives you a little more work time for li lining your profiles before the glue locks up. And of course, that's going to give you a really uh, super strong joint that will uh, just will not, will not fail. At least not underneath the standard load tests. And all of our products have been load tested and passed load tests. So there's your regular rail connector. And uh, that's for doing your 90 to the side. Your 90 over, like you see here on this gooseneck, the instructions are on the pack for that. But that's your lowest mark on your template. You come down, hold it flush with the short point, transfer your mark, come over on the other side of the miter, do the same thing, hold it flush, transfer your mark, and install your hardware. And you may want to make this just about an inch deep as well, pretty much the same as you do the 90 to the side, just to be sure that screw doesn't come out the top. And if you're installing the screw and you see it start to peek out the top there, just back the screw out and, and bands, uh, excuse me, uh, just grind a little bit off the tip. So there's your rail connector and uh, for your butt joints, your 90 degree joints. Now it'll work on anything in between this. In other words, if you're going to come up and jog around a wall and do, and this is a 45 and a 45, well if you're going to do a 22 and a half and a 22 and a half and then another 22 and a half and a 22 and a half, this hardware works on that as well. It'll work on a 90 or, or a butt or joint and anything in between and installs high up in the profile so you can drill a baluster right on the joint and that hits your hardware. That all works with uh, Tight Bond 2 or Tight Bond 3 if you're working outside. The next kit that we have is the rail to post kit. This one is uh, a one inch hole, one inch deep. It's a more stout spring. The uh, reason is, is because it has to attach the rail to the post and it just requires a lot more clamping power. So we increased the size of this and also made it stainless steel so that it can be used inside or out and deck screws are provided so that you can use it in pressure treated wood or in uh, oak, hardwood such as oak. So that's an indoor outdoor and that's a rail to post connect connection. You don't need to use glue or epoxy with that but you can. The next one down is a uh, super bolt and the super bolt is uh, basically the same size wire as this but it's longer and it allows for a longer uh, steel center pin half inch steel center pin and this is used on making joints on helical rails. If you've got two uh, three foot long pieces of rail in a helix that were milled on a 5 axis CNC this works really good for that. Also uh, if you have to if you need to join two 10 foot pieces of rail to make a 20 foot long piece for some reason this will provide you with a, a very uh, not just clamping power because of the springs but because of the length of the steel in here this one you would set with epoxy and now you've steel reinforced your joint. So there's the super bolt. Not a really big call for that but, but when you need it there really isn't anything else there that'll out there that'll do the job quite as well. Post to deck kit is this size here the one that's most commonly used and installs the same way. It's uh, uh, drilling a hole into your deck and a hole into the base of your post. Inch and three eighths hole, three and three eighths deep. Uh, the best advice I have when you're drilling a hole into your deck is, is to get your blocking in, make sure you have blocking. And when you drill your hole, have a abrasive inch and three eighths hole cutting abrasive tip cutter. And the reason for that is if you're drilling with your paddle bit and you feel a tick on your paddle bit and you, you know you're hitting some metal, back your bit out change over to the abrasive hole cutting bit, cut through the tip of your screw or cut through the nail, take a, 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 a needle nose and pull that little piece of metal out and carry on redrilling with your paddle bit. So having this on hand is going to uh, allow you to get through the job even if you do hit uh, a nail or a screw. And then of course you're going to uh, uh, a screw a spring to the both, uh, base of both holes, insert your epoxy and then your metal pin and then just carry on with your installation as it shows 
on our instructions and also in other videos that I have. Okay, so there's your post to deck kit. This one here is the HL series. HL's for high load. And this is going to go down into the deck the same distance as the uh, standard post to deck kit, but it goes six inches uh, overall, six and three eighths, an additional three inches up into the post. And the reason for that is if you've got a post out on the end of a run and it's a standalone post and it's not really gaining strength from anything else on the system, then this, this is a really good uh, piece of hardware to use for that. And uh, this has been uh, load tested and has passed load tests on pressure treated wood. So uh, your, it works for your, your softer woods, uh, poplar, uh, pine, cypress, and cedar. And that's a very, very good, uh, requires a little more uh, epoxy. The uh, one pint of epoxy will take care of uh, installing four of the regulars and uh, one pint of epoxy will take care of two of these. So you got a little more epoxy but it's uh, it's when you need when you need it this is the strength this is, and something that's really going to get the job done even in soft woods that's the kit you want to use. So that's pretty much the the overview right there with a few tips explaining each of the products. Uh, we hear, continue to have uh, very good feedback from, from people and if when you're using this or even if you're thinking about using this and you have any questions, just give me a call. Uh, my cell phone number is uh, on the website. It's 561-951-3334 uh, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you have and uh, help you even figure out how much hardware you need to do the job. So uh, when you get a chance, order some in and give it a try and I'm, I'm quite sure you'll be very pleased with the results. Thank you. Bye.